Hi everyone, welcome to Practice Problem Intangible 01. This one's just going to contain two quick questions about accounting for intangible assets. First up, a multiple choice. Which of the following are characteristics of intangible assets? It could be one right, could be more than one right. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can identify the answers. Come on back and I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So um, starting at the top, which of the following are characteristics of intangible assets? A, they are all maintained on the balance sheet at historical cost. Now, this one may seem like it is true on the surface, but you'll see this word right here, all. Typically, when you see these absolute phrases, um, they, they tend to be wrong because there are exceptions, and this is no different. Um, they are not necessarily all maintained on the balance sheet at historical cost. In fact, internally generated intangible assets, because of the stringent rules about what you're allowed to capitalize or not capitalize, may not ever even make it to your balance sheet, um, as is in the case of, like, say, McDonald's Golden Arches. Those probably aren't on McDonald's um, balance sheet. Um, and so all of your intangibles may not actually show up on the balance sheet. And even those that do make it to the balance sheet may not always be on there at historical cost. One, because you may end up adding value to it later because, um, say, you have to defend your intangible in court and you're allowed to capitalize the legal defense costs, or the intangible could lose value and undergo something we refer to as impairment, where you actually have to mark its value down because it's, it's not worth as much anymore. Um, and so for all those exceptions, A is not a characteristic of intangible assets. All right, how about B? They have no physical substance. That is definitely true. That is the core characteristic of an intangible asset. It doesn't have a physical substance. It's not a building. It's not equipment. It's not land. It's not this big thing that you can touch. Um, C, they include copyrights, patents, research and development, and goodwill. If you're reading too quickly, this one might have struck you as true. However, pat, uh, intangible assets do not include research and development. Therefore, C is not true either. Research and development can create an intangible asset, but the research and development itself is not an intangible. Um, and that brings us to D. They provide current and or future value to the company. Well, that right there is the definition of an asset. And of course, that applies to all intangible assets as well. Therefore, B and D were the correct answers. All right, let's do another one. This one involving a little math, but still the same concept. On March 1, Flyer Course spent $500 to file a copyright application for a written work. Gives you some details about that. It tells you on July 31st, Flyer Corps acquired a patent from another company with the price tag. Gives you some details about that. It says on August 31, Flyer Corps filed a trademark for $2,000, and the logo protected by that trademark had cost $4,500 in R&D to create it. Gives you some more details about that. The question is, of this information, how much in total should Flyer Corps report on its balance sheet for intangible assets? Take a moment, pause the video, read through the information in detail, see if you can come up with that sum total. When you're ready, come on back. I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So I'm going to take this $1 value at a time and go from there. It says on March 1st, you spent $500 to file a copyright application for a written work. Um, any paperwork that you need to file um, for a, a, an intangible asset, that essentially counts as part of kind of your legal paperwork, your filing fees. That does count um, as, as a capitalizable cost. So you would be able to debit copyright 500, and therefore that would be included. Um, let's see. It gives you some information about the copyright and how long you intend to use it and all that, but that's irrelevant for whether or not you include it now um, as part of your assets. On July 31st, Flyer Corps acquired a patent from another company for $35,000. So in this case, you're, uh, you're actually buying your intangible and assuming that you are buying on the open market where that is a fair price for the intangible, you do get to then record on your books, debit patent, $35,000. It tells you how long you expect to use the patent, um, but again, that's irrelevant for what you're capitalizing now. Finally, on August 31st, Flyer Corps filed a trademark for $2,000. So just like the copyright application, those filing fees do count as part of your assets. So you can debit trademark $2,000. And it says that the logo protected by the trademark cost $4,500 in research and development to create. Um, and then gives you some details about renewing the trademark. So 
The details about renewal don't matter in this case because all we're trying to do is figure out what are you going to capitalize to intangibles. The 4500 in research and development, even though it gave rise to an intangible that you did file, it gave rise to this trademark, um, research and development itself is an expense. You do not get to count that as part of your intangible assets. Therefore, the only things that count are what we have listed here. We add those up and we have a grand total of 37,500 total intangibles. Okay. That's it for your quick questions on intangible assets, specifically around capitalizing and characteristics of intangibles. I hope you found this helpful and I hope you join me for another video.